Hey, can anybody hear me? Yes, sir. Good. Hallelujah. Uh, if I can just figure out how to push the right button here. Launching. O open Zoom. Zoom meeting, sign in. I don't want to sign in. I want to do this meeting. No, I'm okay, I think. Wait, are you signed in? I don't know. Sign in. I have to enter my email? Yeah. She didn't say anything about that. Oh. Okay, so get on Google Chrome. Well, I did that. Here, just exit as that. Okay, hey, I'm going to try all over again and just be patient. Okay, thank you, sir. We'll, we'll figure it out. We did it before, we can do it again. Invite others, maybe invite others. Let's do that. Yeah, that's it. Gmail. Okay, now do you need, do you need any more help getting on? I don't know. Loading Gmail. I back, I'm gonna go get some work done. You, you, you go get your work done, we'll be okay. Okay. Okay, I think things are looking good. Two. Send. There's just at least one participant. I want all you guys. I just go. I'm having trouble. Maybe I should start all over again. Is that you, Kristen? Yes, sir. I'm here. You're a sweetie. <laughs> Thank you. Yep, I'm, I'm here and just ready whenever you are. <laughs> yeah, well, I want to see all your happy faces and your names uh, up on this thing. Okay, now I'm going to kind of start over again. I'm going to click on Zoom. And then go to my account, top right. All right, I'm going to do that. That's what my daughter told me. Go to meeting tab. Uh, there, there it says meetings. Click, click on the meetings. And pick the meeting you want. Now, the meeting I want is 930 today, my meeting. Meetings. Okay. And I want to say join, I guess. And then does it say open Zoom? Pick the meeting you want. Let's start meeting. I thought I did that.
says share screen. I suppose that's what I want. I don't know. So Mr. Griffin. Is it really? <laughs> yes. Launch meeting. How about that? I'm just not sure on anything yet. No, I just want to hear his voice. <laughs> Uh, How are you going to eat with a mask? None of us are wearing masks. I'm not wearing a mask. <laughs> <laughs> Says to sign in. I don't need to sign in, I don't think. And I don't know my password either. All right, I thought I had it on mute. I'm at work. <laughs> Once you're on Zoom, say hello to your students. Hello, students. Give them time to get logged in. Well, it's you, we got five minutes before it's official. Tell, uh, tell them I'm going to mute them. Not yet. I don't want to mute, mute anybody. <laughs> I need help. I'm getting my ten-year-old grandson over here. He's going to help me. Oh, okay. So, so try to get here. Just leave meeting. Wait. Stop share. Stop share. And then, wait. Start video. Oh, start video. Hey, where did you see that? Right, right there. there. Start video. Hey, the Eric Jones popped up. Hello. Kristen popped up. I'm gonna get full screen. Hey, there's Kristen. Yeah. Hello. My grandson figured this out. I know. Don't you love it when um our our you know kids younger than us know more than we do? He's he's ten years old. Yep, right? yep. I understand. Um, that's what mine are. They're way more technology savvy than I am. I've got Cameron. Hey, can you see me? Yes, sir. Really? Yes, sir. I can see you. I don't see me on here. Oh. Eric. Oh, there I am up in yeah, the corner. Yeah, see yourself right there. And then but, remember. To but I, I want to see everybody, not just Kristen. All I've got is Kristen right here. See? That's because nobody's talking. Nobody's talking. Kristen's the only one. There's talking. there's Nicholas. Yeah. And there's Eric. Daniel. He, Daniel muted his. Gavin Jackson, Cameron Teague. Where's the rest of them? No, I mean, we, we oh, still have a couple more minutes. Boy, uh, Caitlin, Cameron, Jack, Kevin. Well, it, okay, well, uh, at least I have Kristen, and you, you're the only one. <laughs> now, this says marriage participants. If I clicked on that, what happened? Small. Well, here's a whole list of students here Cameron, Caitlin, Daniel, Eric, Gavin, Coy. Got another daughter on here somehow. Okay, those are the participants. Well, where'd I go? And where's my where's my uh, whiteboard? I need my whiteboard. Well, Papa, you need to ask, you need to tell them to read this. It says, say hello to once it's time to start, tell her should you learn the music. Under participants tab, manage participants. And Man to pin and to manage pin the teacher. Pin the teacher. So you are the only one that they see on their screen. Well, where does it say pin the teacher? They have to pin you. Yeah, I've already pinned you, sir, so that you're the one I see. Well, right now, Kristen, you're the only one I see. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, that's, <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> and, uh, here's manage participants. Yeah. So you can mute them if you want. And then that's pretty much it. Okay, uh, and, what about my whiteboard? Can you see my whiteboard? Yes, sir. Yeah, but I need to see it so I'll know what's going on. 
<sighs> Papa, they're gonna pin you, so you There's Allison. Hello, Allison. Hello. That was sort of a sleepy hello, Allison. Okay, uh we, we can go to chat. I wonder what chat will do. Let's try that. You can tell them to ask what ask you with Papa. Here's what they have to do to go to ask questions. Yeah, they can go to chat tap tab. Easy. I don't think that helped me much. Papa, if it will help you, because you, then you don't have to unmute every. Well, you will. I don't know how to mute anybody. Stop video mute. I don't want to mute anybody. Well, uh, I guess all you guys can hear me, right? Yes, sir. Well, uh, I'm swamped with uh, emails, and my, my daughter tells me you can post uh, assignments on Blackboard if I can figure out how to do it. So for the next few days, we're not I'm working on training for TCC. I'm walking my dad's class. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was the daughter that, that told me, or one of the daughters, that I can uh, post your assignments on email. Uh, no, on uh, Blackboard. Until I figure out how to do that, students listen to me. We're not going to turn in any homework for a few days. I know that, that, I know that troubles you. It does. We're, we're going to, don't get me wrong, we're going to do homework. I'm going to give you homework. And I'm going to have these wonderful lectures every Tuesday and Thursday at 930 for this class that you're in. Twice a week at the same time that you always have class, right? I don't know what that bling was. But I don't like this screen that I've got right now. I need to see, uh, let me click on Daniel and see what happens. There's Daniel, nothing happened. Wait, hold on. If you want to see yourself. There. Now oh, look at there. There's there, there's some people. There there I am up in the corner. That That's because you went over to see all your other classmates, uh -huh. and then you can just scroll over and see these arrows. Yeah. You can look at all the, cl all the class. Yeah, there's Kristen. And then you can go back, and then you can see the whiteboard. Okay. So then you just have to ask them all to pin you. They have to pin me. Hi, Susanna. Hey, you're muted, Susanna. You've muted yourself. I did. I muted. I muted myself. But can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Now, okay. everybody, this is one of one of my wonderful daughters, Susanna. Say say hello to Susanna. Hello. They didn't say hello. They're oh, all hello. They're probably <laughs> muted. Sorry. They're muted. Okay. Now, what I want to see is the whiteboard, Susanna, so I can write on it. I can see you and I can see your whiteboard. Yeah, but I can't see it. Uh, so I don't know whether it's coming. Wait a minute. I can see it in a little bitty picture. I yeah. Can... So like if, when I press on you, I see you like in big screen and I see your whiteboard. <laughs> Good. Now, if I press on me, I, it'll make me big. It should. Yeah. But I just pressed on yeah, you and well, now you're big yeah. on my screen. Okay. Now, hey, there's me and, and it's the whiteboard. Okay. Well, let me start my lesson. It's nine or nine thirty. And we're gonna talk about whatever we're talking about. Let me see what we're supposed to be doing. You guys know that we're behind uh, a little bit. Yes, sir. We are behind. Now I gave you a, a homework problem. I think it was seven thirteen. Did you, did you work on 713, y'all? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. Well, I got the answer here. Uh, 4.217 megapascal is the maximum shear stress. Did you get that? Uh, yes, sir. Good for you. Good for you. Yeah, yeah, Gabriel. 
I'm about five divided by a hundred would be twenty-five, but six. Yeah. Maybe that's uh who needs help with this homework? Six sixty hundredths is how many fifths? Uh well I know the answer, it's three fifths, but baby I gotta do this here. I no problems. <laughs> I can't do everything. All right, now the topics for today. Well the big topic for today is a thing called sheer flow. That's what we're going to talk about. So, so let me give you a boring lecture on shear flow. Does that sound good? Yes, sir. Uh, now, it is in your book, and it's on page... Uh, no. It is on page 386. And I'm going to try to explain what shear flow is. All right, here we go. Uh, I need to move this board a little, maybe a little closer. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> shear flow. The topic today is shear mm -hmm. flow. All right, and. Uh, if, if you had just a simple, uh, say, a two-by-four, uh, or better yet, let's have uh, two two-by-fours. And we'll make a beam out of them. You could you can make a beam out of two uh, two-by-fours like that. Actually, those look more like a two by six, don't they? Rather than a two by four. But you can make a beam on it and you could put it between two sawhorses and somebody could sit on it and it would, uh, it would bend and you would discover there would be a shear stress and, and we have the formula for it. Uh, let's see, how does that go? It's called the uh, shear formula. We've studied that, haven't we? Yes, sir. The shear formula. Well, <clears throat> if you were to look at this bottom, well, it's really more like a two by six, you'll discover that there's a, a shear stress going that way on it, but there has to be one going that way where, where they would slide, slide together. Uh, let me make a little stress element. This is a shear stress element. You'll, you'll see these in your book. They're called stress element. This one's a shear stress element. And you've got shear stress going that way here. But, but on the back side, sum of all, all the forces has to be zero. And so on the back side, it's kind of hard for me to draw. I'll try to draw it with dashed lines. On the back side, if that's going down, you'll have to have a shear, a shear stress going up. I should have made that bigger because the sum of the forces have to be zero. Well, now, now there's a problem. That thing's going to rotate. So you're going to have, a, have to have a shear, a shear stress going this way on the top and the shear stress going that way on the bottom. Mm, I don't know if I explain that very good. <clears throat> but what we're saying is there is some shear between these members here. See, if you were to look at that board there, that bottom board, it, it wants to slide uh, underneath the top board and what they do is they uh, they'll glue it or they'll put screws in it or bolts or somehow trying to hold them together so they don't slide 
And what shear flow is, it's the force divided by the length oh, they use a Q, sorry, it's a the book uses a Q for for shear flow and it's the force acting on well if there's a shear stress acting on this bottom board, then there's a force acting on it like that. And the length of the board is just uh, L. So the shear flow is the force per length. Now, now we're going to come up with our shear flow formula. Here we go. Uh, that force is equal to the shear stress times the area that we're talking about. The area we're talking about would be an area like that. And that area is equal to the length times the um, thickness would be a nice name for it. So this, this is equal length times thickness. That's the area. Okay. Now we have a formula for shear stress. It's up here. So this is equal to VQ I T L T. I'm goofing this up now. Just a minute. Uh, uh, let's see. Sure. Yeah. Now I'm I'm forgetting. <clears throat> That's the force. And, and to get to get the Q. To get the shear flow, you have to take the, the force, which is this, and you have to divide by uh, the length. There we go. <clears throat> now notice the L's cancel out and so do the T's. And so the formula for shear flow is VQ over i see 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 if you can find that in your book look on look on page uh, 386 this is on page 386 did everybody get muted let, let me let me ask somebody <laughs> Can you find that? Uh, Eric, unmute. Eric, well, what, can you find that in your book on page 386? Uh, yes. They call that shear flow. And it's the force per length uh, that you need to keep from the boards from sliding. We don't want them to slide. So with that, we're going to try a problem now. Uh, we're going to try problem, uh, let's see, uh, we're going to try, pro we're going to uh, try problem uh, F76. Those are nice, those fundamental problems, because if you get stuck, you can look up the answer. Okay, here goes. This is F76. Uh, I'm going to erase all this stuff. And the topic today is shear flow. It's in your book. You know, what they got there is two boards. And actually, they're uh, 300 by 100 millimeters. So here, let me draw that. They're 100 by 300 uh, millimeters, and there's two of them. They're in millimeters. And they're going to put some uh, nails, bolts. They're going to put bolts on them. 
Okay. Each bolt has a shear strength of 15 kilonewtons. All right. Now here's, here's, we're going to put the bolts on there, but they're going to arrange them like this. Now this distance L is the distance between these bolts. That's the distance between the bolts. And so the, the shear flow They, they use this symbol Q, is going to be the, uh, the force of each nail. The thing is, there's two nails. Each nail uh, can hold up to 15 kilonewtons of shear. So what we got here is 2 times 15 kilonewtons divided by L. The trouble is we don't know what the L is. Ah, but we have a formula for shear flow that I, I derived for you. It's in your book if you didn't understand it. This is it. This is equal to VQ over I. Now, now we know V, they told us it was uh, 50 kilonewtons. So, so we know V, uh, we don't have I, Let, let's figure out I. I. I'm going to shut up for about a minute and a half, and I want you to figure out the moment of inertia I. I want you to, I'll give you a, a big hint, it's 1 12th uh, BH cubed. So go ahead. And I'm going to go ahead too, and I'm going to figure out what the moment of inertia is. And I want you to do it. I wonder if everybody's still there. Are, are you guys, are you still there? Yeah, yeah, Eric says yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, good going. All right. Find the moment of inertia. Well, I got an answer. Did you get this answer? Uh, it's meters, isn't it? Did anybody get that? Uh, two, yes, sir. One yeah. ten to the minus four. Hey, looky here. We, we, we know V. What does it mean in this class when you circle stuff? It means you know it. We know, we know what it is. And we know R. Now, if we could just get this new thing, I told you what that is. It's called the first moment of area. Can you show how you got I again? Uh, yeah. Uh oh, everything just fell out of my lap. Just let me pick everything up and then I'll show you how to do that. Book fell down. My eraser fell down. Just a minute. Okay. I'm back among, <clears throat> among the land of the living here temporarily. Okay. All right, here goes. I'm going to go. Uh, I is one twelve point three times point two cube. That should give you that answer. Try it. Now, who, who asked for that question? Was that Eric? Yeah, I did. I think I just forgot to cube it. 
Well, you got it now. Now, all we got to do, Eric, is figure out this Q. And I think we got it made. Okay. I just need a little room to do that Q. Let's see. Hmm. Uh, now, now, guys, that big Q and that little Q are different. Don't, don't get them mixed up. We're going to do the big Q now. Here goes. Remember how to do that? You, uh, you, you want to draw a line through this here because this is where we're talking about them sliding, the shear flow. And then you color the stuff above it. And you, and you just take the area times the distance. And that's it. Now the area is uh, 0 0.3 times 0.1 in uh, square meters. And the distance would be to the middle of this. It would just be this distance here, which is uh, 0 0.05. These are all in meters. OK. I'm going to do that now. Wait, why is it 0.05? Uh, I think that's this distance here. It's from here to here is 50 millimeters, isn't it? And that's 0.05. Um, okay, so you're just taking the distance of one of the, the blocks, half of one of the blocks then, because it shows that each block's 100. So you're just doing half of one of them? Remember to find Q. The definition of Q is the first moment of area. And the area we're interested in okay. is the area above that line. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. You are very welcome. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do it now. Here it goes. 0. 0.3 times 0. 0.1 times 0 0.05. Boy, Job, I'm getting 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3. I might be going off the board here. Uh, I bet you guys can read that. It's meters cubed. Anybody getting that 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3 meters cubed? Yes. Yay! Look at here. We got all of that. So you can get that shear flow and, and you can solve for the, uh, the length between the, uh, between the bolts. All right, I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna solve for the length between the bolts. See, we, we know everything in this equation except the length between the bolts. So I'm gonna do it now, here goes. Let's see, 50 e to the third times 1.5 e to the minus third divided by uh, 2 e to the minus 4. Okay. And then what you have to do is you have to divide that into 30 kilonewtons. Okay. Well, uh, I got a ridiculous answer, so I must have done something wrong. Well, let me start over again. All right, times i, which is 2 e to the minus 4. Okay, uh, divided by uh, 50 e to the third, divided by 1.5 e to the negative 3 equals. Now that this looks reasonable. I'm coming up with 0 0.08 meters. In other words, 8 centimeters between these rows of bolts. Did anybody else get that? 
I did. Yay, there's two of us. I'm going to look up the answer now. I'm going to look up, uh, uh, this was problem. Oh, I erased it, didn't I? <laughs> I think when I dropped everything, it fell off there. I must have erased it. It's problem F76. We just did problem F76. Okay, let me see what they said the answer is. F76. Okay, they said it's uh, 0.08 meters or 80 millimeters. Hey, we got what they got. 0.08 meters or 80 millimeters or eight centimeters between the, the bolts that would be required. If, if you space those bolts out any farther than that, they would shear off. You could, you could space them closer and, and you're okay. Okay, well, there's that problem. We did a, a shear flow problem. And now what are you going to do? I'm going to give you a, I'm going to give you a problem to do, but I don't want you to turn it in because I'm trying to figure out a better way to turn in problems. Uh, Mr. Griffin. Yeah, I'm listening. I had a question about uh, why is it 215 kilonewtons rather than 50 kilonewtons? Maybe I just kind of spaced out when you explained it, but why is it not 50 kilonewtons? It is 50 kilonewtons. Where, where are you getting 250 kilonewtons? Where your Q is equal to 215. Uh, the Q is one. Uh, sorry, your V. The V, 50 kilonewtons. Yeah, the V is 50 kilonewtons. Isn't that what it says? In my or it, it doesn't say 215. That's 2 times 15. He always puts uh, a space in between them. And those the 15 kilonewtons, that was given in the, the problem okay. statement. And it's the length between, um, like, the two bolts. I okay. Guess. Yeah. So, anyhow, that's what that is. Okay, thank you. No problem. We're, we're, we're squared away? I yeah. believe so. Excellent. Now, now who, who was that that was just speaking? Kristen. Oh, that, yeah, but I mean before that. The, oh. oh, that was me, Heath. Oh, that was Heath. Yeah, hi, Heath. I recognize your voice. I, I recognize your voice. So now, now here's, here's your homework problem, and I, I need to put this on Blackboard because not everybody tunes into this. There's a way, my daughter, one of my daughters tells me there's a way that we can record this and you guys could, you could watch this thing over and over. It's so fascinating, I know, you just love this. But see, you could, if you missed a session, we can record the session. Have you ever heard of that? I know you have. <laughs> Okay. We're not as tech savvy as you, Mr. Griffin. <laughs> did, did you say I was t t tech savvy? Is that what you said? <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, now he here, here's your homework. I need to put this on Blackboard. Let me write it down. But don't, don't turn it in. I got, I'm, I got to get caught up on all this homework. I got about four hours of catching up to do just to catch up the homework that we that you've turned in already but I'm doing my best but it's going to be 735 let me write that down for you we we could do some of it together the topic today was shear flow and the homework this is not do homework. Don't turn it in. I got enough stuff to, to 
to grade right now until I figure out a better system of grading. This is problem 735. Uh, Dr. Griffin, <laughs> what you could do is you can have a, uh, a file on Blackboard that we can upload to and you can check from there. That's what's done at OSU. I'll have a file on Blackboard that you can upload to. So like what we can do is like we scan it and we upload it and all you have to do is grade it. That'd be wonderful. See, the way I'm doing things now is insane. I'm getting, I have four classes and I'm getting all these emails mixed together in sort of a potpourri. Uh, and so it's driving me nuts. Hey, Susanna, are you still with us? That's my other daughter. Nope, I guess I lost her. She was there for a minute. Okay, now this is, this is 735. And you're going to do this for homework. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to post the answer. But I want you to work on it. Th this is homework. It's not optional. I want you to do it. It's just that I don't know how to efficiently grade it yet. But let's get started. Let's get part of it done together. We can do that. We've spent a half an hour. We, we could spend another uh, 20 minutes on this. And then that's going to be our lesson. And then what, what are we going to do when, uh, today's what, Tuesday? Thursday, what are we going to do? Well, hey, Dad. Yeah. yeah, hey, that's my daughter, yeah. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, I'm still here. I'm still here. Um, but, what were you asking about the uploading, a, upl letting them upload assignments to a file? Yes, that was Heath talking. One yeah, my, that, we, one can set, we can set that up. Excellent students. Yeah, we can figure out how to set that up for you. That would be simply marvelous, as they say in Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, you can oh, just post. Yeah, you can just post what we need to do, and we upload it as a PDF, and then you can grade it that way. Fabulous. And all your all your classes will stay separate. Yeah. So yeah. now they're all mixed together, like a mm -hmm. like a bag of frozen uh, vegetables: the peas and the corn and everything. Right. Else is just and you're getting so many emails every day. Yeah, it may be about 100 a day. Yeah. But I, I haven't caught up yet, but I will. I will catch up. Okay, now we're going we're gonna to give you a, a, a leg up on 735. Here it goes. And let me find it first. Now, here it goes. Uh, yeah, all right. Okay, I'm going to try to draw this the best I know how. This is uh, 10 inches by one and a half. I, of course, I want, you, I want you students to do this to scale. Get your, get your rulers out and do it to scale. Now, now the web is only one inch. It's a little thinner. It's a little thinner. And this bottom flange is only three inches. If I if I read that right, let me see. Uh, no, no, no. It's it's six inches. This is ten inches. One and a half inches. This is twelve inches. Make this a little bit thicker, maybe. There we go. Well, that's not too terribly bad, but you're going to make it nice and neat with your with your rulers, right? Okay. Now, the first thing you got to do is find the centroid. Without the centroid, it's all over. We're never going to get this. And by the way, they've got bolts or nails. What are they on this seven? We're doing seven thirty-four. It's nails. Uh, do I want seven thirty-four? Five or seven thirty-four. Just a minute. Three boards. No, no, I want seven thirty-four, guys. I lied to you. I want seven thirty-four. And uh, 
like my excellent student just said, they're nails. We're going to put nails in there so these, these don't slide apart. Now, actually, see, it's a beam. It, it goes back like this. Artist's rendition here. Oops, I'm running out of room here. You can see it's a beam. And it's it's loaded. And the the boards are going to try to slide uh, across each other because of the shear stress. But first, we got to find the uh, centroid. Now, now, we talked about that, but at least we could do that together, couldn't we? We could get the centroid done. All right, here goes. We're going we're gonna to find, together we're going to find the centroid. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shut up for about two minutes. And I want you to find the centroid. I tell you what, it's going to be kind of up in here someplace. A little bit closer to the top than the bottom. Can you see that? Okay, two minutes are starting. Uh, see if you can find the centroid while I shut up. I've got Coy, Allison, Kyle, Kylie. Hi, Kylie. <laughs> and Taylor. Hi, Taylor. Caitlin, Coy, Coy, Cameron. Hey Heath, how come how come your picture isn't here? I don't see your picture in here. I just had it taken off. There, is. there he is. I see Heath now. And, and Nicholas, I don't see your picture either. But I think he's with us. Hey Griffin, I'm here. Uh, let me see if I, there's, there's Heath, there's, there's my daughter. Do you see me now, Mr. Griffin? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I see you. I see you now. Are you outside? I'm at work. Oh, you're at work. Mm -hmm. But I, I have, uh, the lecture recording. Well, that is phone. great. Great. So you'll be able to watch this lecture later if you want, right? Yeah, I'm listening in though. Good for you, uh, Nicholas. Good, excellent. Okay, guys, uh, I gave you two minutes, and and I got an answer for the uh, the 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 uh, centroid, and what I got was. Eight point, I got 8.625 inches. 
Now I want to hear some uh-huhs on that. I don't hear any uh-huhs. Working out currently still. <laughs> well, take your time. Take your time. I'll take a drink of water. Well, see, this is important. If you don't get that right, you're not going to get any of the other stuff right. Ah. How about Kylie? Kylie, did you get that eight point, uh, whatever it is, uh, six two five? Earth calling Kylie, Earth calling Kylie. Come in, Kylie. I'm not getting any answer from Kylie. I don't feel happy. I'm I'm waiting for some uh-huhs. I got that answer. Yay. Yes, sir. Yeah, there's two of you. I, I need a couple more. Now now does anybody want me to write it out? Yeah, because I'm not getting that answer right now. Okay, well here, I'll write it out. <coughs> I wonder if you can see, uh, yeah, you can see over here. That's how I did it. If you put those numbers in your calculator, you should get 8.625. Do I need to explain any of that? Who's that excellent student that didn't get that? That just told me they didn't get that. Oh, that was me. Uh, but that, the thing oh. is, I got the same values, so I think I just mistyped in the calculator. That's just what I'm trying to find. Uh, yeah, you had a calculator error, maybe. Yeah, yeah that happens. Uh, well, what about my friend Allison? Allison, did you get that? Why, why do I hear a dog barking in the background? That's my dog. That's why I had it on mute. <laughs> What's your dog's name? Oh, I got three of them. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they like barking. I have a dog, but she doesn't bark hardly ever. She can, but she's just very, very quiet. No, uh, they're they're very loud. And that's just the little Pomeranian barking. And then I got a pit bull mix and then a giant lab. <laughs> I love those labs. Well, my uh, my dog's a mutt. I got her at the uh, shelter. Well, uh, I was hoping for some more uh-huhs and I asked for Kylie and Allison, but they haven't reported back. How about Koi? 
Coy, did you get that? He's not going to answer. Yeah, Coy. Yeah, you... I, I haven't got it yet, so. No, okay, I can wait. I, I get I get paid whether we get it fast or slow. I still get paid. I'm thank. By the way, I'm thankful for that. I still have a job, and a lot of people don't. what I got. Yay. Okay, now we're going to we, we're going to have to find the uh, moment of inertia now. Now this is rep repetitive but sometimes repetition is good. To find the moment of inertia, you're going to need to put dots in the center of those uh, areas. You're going to need a dot right here and a dot right here. And one right here. And we're going to have to find the distance from the centroid of the whole thing to each of those dots. We're going to have to find this distance, this distance here, and this distance here in order to find the centroid, in order to use the uh, parallel axis theorem. Okay. Well, I can find those. Uh, this point right here is at uh, 12 plus one and a half is 13 and a half plus 0.75. It's at 14.25. 14.25 minus 8.625. That will give me that distance. I'm getting five, <clears throat> five point six two five for that distance. If you subtract, that's what you should get. So that's a five and a two. Uh huh. And that's a so yeah. That's right. Now to find this little distance here, I'm going to have to take uh, seven and a half. I'm going to have to, to find that little distance there. I'm sorry this is so tedious, but sometimes important things are tedious. And in order to find the stress, you have to know the moment of inertia. And it may be tedious to find, but if you design something and, and it breaks because you didn't know how to figure the stress, that, that's not so tedious when, when the thing crashes down on you. Okay, I'm trying to find this distance right here. Well, it's 8.625. Minus, uh, well, it would be seven and a half. If you need me to explain why it's seven and a half, I'll be glad to. But I got an answer of 2.625. This, this here should be 2.625. And finally, I need, Wait, where are you getting the 2.625? Well, I subtracted here. Let, let me go ahead and subtract and make sure I did this right. Uh, I think it's wrong. I think it's wrong. It's 1.625, isn't it? Uh, no, no, no. No, no, no. No, it's... Uh, I got to take 8.625 and I have to subtract. No, it's a, it's seven and a half. Uh, from here to here, it's, 
No, 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 no. It, it's, it's. Uh, I did that wrong. See, it's six six inches from here to here, and then a, a half of an inch, right? No, no, 0.75. It's six. It's six point seven five, guys. It's it's six. I did that wrong. It's six point seven five, and when you subtract, you get. Uh, I'm fouling up on this, and so let me let me think a minute. From here to the bottom is eight point six two five. We all agree on that. And from from the bottom up to here, no, no, that's that's seven and a half. I had that right in the first place. Where I went wrong is. Uh, this should be 1.125 from here to here, 1.125. I think I got that right now. Are you taking it from that bottom centroid or are you just taking it from the ground? I'm taking it from the ground. Uh, but what, what I want is the distance between that centroid there to the centroid of the whole thing. Uh, no, no, no. We're doing this one. I want to take the distance from this centroid here to the centroid of the whole thing. Now, from here all the way to the bottom is 8.625. We did that. And from here to the bottom is 7.5, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And when you subtract, you get 1.125. And so you get 1.125. I, I think I had it wrong. But we're going to get it right. 1.125. Now, finally, I need this distance from here down to here. Okay. Uh, well, that'd be 8.625 minus uh, 0.75, right? One and a half. Uh, yeah, it'd be 8.625 minus 0.75, we get 7.875, the distance from here all the way down to here is 7.875. Okay, I might have it right now. All right. Now we're going to find the, uh, the moment of inertia of this case. And I think I'm going to leave the rest of the problem to you. But I, I will have given you a heads up. And I think we're, we're correct on all of this. Okay, we're going to write the equation now for the moment of inertia. I just need, I need some room. Can we be able to see everything up there? I think so. All right, here goes. No more inertia. For the whole thing. We'll do the bottom piece first. You have to add, uh, you have to use the general axis theorem and you have to add the, uh, the area, which is six square inches times our 7.875 squared. We just did the bottom, we just did this bottom flange. Now we're going to do the web. Here we go. Plus one twelve times one inch
times 12 inches squared. Um, on the that's six inches squared, should that be the six times 1.5? You are absolutely right. And I'm absolutely wrong. <laughs> it's nine square inches, isn't it? Nine square inches. Thank you, point goes up here in this corner. You, you were right. Okay, one twelfth, we're doing the flange now, or, or the web. One twelfth times one times 12 cube, yep. Plus 12 square inches times this little distance here squared. Parallel axis theorem. Finally, we have to do the top flange. Here we go. Plus 1 12th and 10 inches times 1.5 inches cubed plus 15 square inches times the 5.625 squared. Well, it may be ugly, but that's it. That's going to give us our moment of inertia. And let me do that. I wonder if that's what I have scribbled down here. Let me double check. Yeah, I think that's what I have down here. Okay, I'm gonna do it now. I'm gonna get the moment of inertia of this thing. We gotta have it. Okay, I got an answer. I rounded off because I'm running out of space over here. See, see if that's what you guys are coming up with. That's what I got. Yay, there's two of us. That's what I got as well. Yeah, there's two of us. Okay, now what are we going to do with it? Well, let me read the problem here. They said that the shear force is five kips. So we got a, we got a shear force going through here of 5,000 pounds on this composite beam. And, and we're, we're doing problem 734 in case you just woke up from a daydream. That's what we're doing, 734. And they want to know the maximum allowable spacing of the nails. In order to do that, you're going to have to find this thing here. It's called the, the shear flow. We have a formula for it. And, and we know the shear and we know the moment of inertia. We're pretty happy about those two. We don't know this Q thing yet. 
Uh, why don't we do that and then we'll close out the session. And then what you're going to do is you're going to set this equal to the force over the length. And if you read the problem, they, they, uh, they said here, each nail can support 500 pounds. So we, we know what the force is, but see, look, there's only one, one nail at a time. So it's, this is going to be 500 pounds divided by the length. We don't know the length. That's what we're supposed to find. They have an answer in the back. You can look it up. I want you to, I want you to do this and see if you can get that. We, we, we've done a lot of it. We just haven't done the, uh, the first moment of area, that Q thing yet. But you see this equation here? If you can find this first moment of area, <clears throat> then, then you can find the length of the spacing between the nails. I know you can do it. Okay, uh, we're going to let you finish that, and I will post the answer. Don't turn it in. I just want you to learn stuff. We are going to omit... Uh, all this stuff about thin wall members. We're going to omit, uh, you don't have to do that. Let me write it down for you. And we're going to, next time we're going to talk about combined loading. We're behind a, a week, <clears throat> but omit, is there room down here in this corner? Yeah, omit. Page uh, 395 to the end of the chapter there, about page 410. And next time we're going to study combined loading. Primarily what we're going to do next time is pressure vessels. They, they're spherical and cylindrical pressure vessels. There's some room right here. I could write here. Next time. Pressure vessels. Pressure vessels. Next time. And you can read about it. It's chapter 8. It's chapter 8. Okay. Uh, thanks for being wonderful students. Did, did anybody out there have a question? Uh, sir, I have a question. Uh, in the new, new syllabus that you had, um, you, that you, that you posted on Blackboard, it says that, um, uh, our third exam will be on the ninth. Uh, the ninth of what? The ninth of this month. No, we're not going to have a third exam. Oh, okay. We're going to have a final. Oh, okay. Boy, and uh, we will still have some homework that I will grade. So we're not we're not going to have a third exam, but just the final, right? That is correct. Yeah. That but is the final will still replace our lowest exam, right? Yes, or your homework. It'll replace your lowest score. So how are you planning to assign the final, though? Uh, I'm still working on, on how you're going to uh, submit things to me. See, what we've been doing is you've been sending me emails with your homework, right? Yes. Well, if I have to, that's what we'll do with the final, but I don't want to. I, there's a better way, and my, uh, my, my daughters are helping me. You can do the same with the final. Uh, have us uh, put up a file sheet 
and then we do it, and then we upload it. And will it be like kind of like how we did the dynamics test that we just took like a week or so ago? Yes. Um, okay. Perfect. Only, only there's a better way to submit it. Rather than okay. Okay. So, um, for anyone out there who's not in dynamics with him, um, all he did is um, he posted, you know, the tests, and then I, we printed them off, took it, and we emailed it back. So it sounds like in this case, instead of emailing it, we'll just be putting it on Blackboard. How long will we be given for the final? Like, is it going to be like where we have like an hour, two hours? Like, I mean, how will that work? Well, uh, I think you need longer than two hours. I, I think so too. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, two days, that, that might be good. I like to go to sleep, wake up, think about it again. <laughs> really, two days might not be such a bad deal at all. Awesome. Okay. Was it longer or about as average on the exam? Um, the yeah. other one that we did, it was the, the about the same. It'll be, okay. it'll be the same length as the other exams you've had. Only we, okay. You've got to have some... Uh, Moments of inertia and I don't is know. chapter six going to be on the exam? Uh, on the final, you mean? Yeah, I, I it's comprehensive, so we're going to have chapter six. But the thing is, we didn't cover chapter six. We didn't. Are you no. sure? Yeah. Bending. It's, we didn't do bending. No, we only, we only did the diagrams. So, the loading diagrams and, and, and we the never bending diagrams. We never did the flexure formula. Mm. Let me write the flexure formula for you. That's the formula for bending stress. If you have a beam, that's the formula for bending stress. And you've never had that. No, I sir. It, I know it because I took it at U of A, but you haven't covered it in class. Yeah, um, for chapter six, you only assigned us three F problems that only required us to, to draw some, um, the, uh, I can't remember which diagrams now. Uh -huh. I think the, the sh I don't remember. It was um, the but that, diagram and the bending moment diagram. That's right. Yeah, you didn't cover anything else in chapter six. Okay, thank you for telling me. We got to repair that damage. We have got to know how to use the flexure formula. And uh, that's going to be what we're going to do uh, Thursday. Okay. We're, we're not going to do pressure vessels because we've got to do this flexure formula. So let me make a note of that, and I will uh, I will do flexure formula on uh, Thursday. Thanks so much for telling me that. Okay, it's foolproof. I've got it written down here. And at Thursday at 9 o'clock, or 9.30, I mean, uh, we'll talk about the flexure formula. Now, now, now this I thing, see how, see how important that, that moment of inertia thing is, guys? If, if you can't get that, you're not going to get the, the, the bending stress. Bending stress is just a type of normal stress. And this, this bending moment, you know where, I, I want to see if you guys ever listen to me. Where, where do you find the bending moment? How do you get the bending moment? You have to like take a section. After the sections. Yeah, and then you draw a what? You body draw, diagram. Yes. You draw a bending moment loading diagram. That's where you get it from. That's where it comes from. And this, 
this equation we've been doing here, let, let me write it again for you. That, that equation is called the torsion formula. Where, you see that V right there, that sh shear force? Where, where do you get it from? Where do you get it? In the sections. The shear loading diagram? The shear loading diagram is where you get it. Now, sections is one way of getting the shear loading diagram, but you can also use uh, the equations. It, sections is not the only way to get the shear loading diagram, is it? Oh, it is, Mr. Griffith. See, there's other ways. That the equations are very important. You know what equations I'm talking about? Probably not. <laughs> we, I know we did. Like for instance, uh, uh, the shear is equal to the the derivative of the bending moment. Does that ring any bells? It's been covered. That's in chapter six. We did cover that in chapter six. You so, haven't come to chapter six. That's what we're telling you. I'm sorry, say that again, please. We haven't covered chapter six. That's what we're telling you. Oh, well, chapter six. We, we have covered the loading diagrams in chapter six, haven't we? We covered the loading, like, uh, like making, like, the, uh, the diagram, but we haven't covered the differential at the moment, like I, I, that equation. I've never, covered that. You, I've never showed you that equation, and I've never showed you this equation here. I know I have. See, that, that's just the integration of this equation here. And, and I know we've, we've done that. Uh, yes, you did, sir. Who did that? Now, I believe you that that maybe we didn't cover this uh, lecture formula, but we will on Thursday. Thank you for telling me. Okay, guys, I'm going to say goodbye for now. It's been fun, and and I'll see some of you at one o'clock, right, Kristen? Yes, sir. I will see you at one o'clock. Yeah, and and see that's going to be for thermodynamics. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So, I, so I'm, I'm ready. All right, well, adios, muchachos. So, sir, that means that uh, we'll, be, we'll only have like three exams for this class, right? That is correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye, yes, sir. See you in a little bit. See you in a little bit, if I can figure out how to get out of here. Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, crap. And and I want to make sure I save this video. So I need to click on something that says save it. Press the end video. Press the end video. Okay. There it is. In meeting. In meeting for all.